DJI recently released the fourth version of their action camera, the Osmo Action. And after being a GoPro user for about seven years now, I have finally made the switch and I am now a convert. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at what differentiates the Osmo Action 4 from a GoPro and why I think that this might just be the best camera for on the bike video creation. All right guys, before we get into this one, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. We upload videos related to bike packing and bike touring, which range from videos of bike packing trips to reviews of bike packing or bike touring adjacent equipment. So if that's something that you're into, hit the button. So some of you guys will already know that over the last six months, I've been slowly upgrading my video setup so that I can make better videos. And the last piece of that puzzle is to finally upgrade my five-year-old GoPro Hero 7. This GoPro has been a real workhorse for me over the years, but it's starting to show its age and it does have a few quirks that have been kind of frustrating to deal with during that time. So rather than a straight up review, I'm gonna be comparing the Osmo Action 4 to GoPro and talking about what finally made me jump ship. And then maybe at the end of the video, we'll talk about the bundle that I bought and the accessories that came with it. But for now, let's get into it. Now, as you guys know, this isn't a tech channel, so we're not gonna get into the real nitty gritty of video specs and performance. There are plenty of other channels that can do that for you, but we will take a quick look at the basics. Now, as far as video quality goes, they both do 4K, they can both do 120 frames a second, they can both do time lapses. And for my purposes, they're mostly the same. I mean, they can both do great quality video. And even the audio is kind of similar. They just sound like they're EQ'd a little bit different. In fact, here's a clip that I originally shot to show the different fields of view that are available on the Osmo, but it gives a good impression of the sound quality too. All right, so this is our vlog test. We're on the standard setting, de-warped, and it's a little bit windy out, so we'll see how the audio holds up. It's also very bright, so we'll see if that has an effect on anything. And this is the wide setting. This is pretty wide. This is only at arm's length for these tests. And as you can see, you're getting a lot of background in the picture. Finally, super wide. Again, arm's length, not even fully outstretched arm. This is very comfortable and it's super wide. The only difference of note to me is that the GoPro can do 5.7K video, but the Osmo has a bigger sensor. Now I only just started filming in 4K, so 5.7K isn't something I'm gonna use, but the bigger sensor in the DJI is something that can make a difference for me. Now for those who don't know, a bigger sensor basically can catch more light. And in photography, that can mean a few things. But in this case, it mainly translates to better low light performance. And I'd rather have a camera that works better in the dark than one that has a resolution that I'm never gonna use. One point to the Osmo Action. So next up, let's talk about mounting hardware. Everyone is familiar with GoPro's mounting hardware. You've got this three finger connector and these buckles that can clip in and out. And I've always thought they were a good idea in theory, but in practice, they aren't quite as functional as they look. The buckles are kind of clunky and they take some force to clip in and out. And I've tried my best to use them for quickly switching between, let's say a helmet mount and a chest mount, but it just never seems to work that smoothly. So I got around this in the past by using the magnetic helmet mount that comes with certain Bontrager helmets. But then if you want to switch to a different mount, then you have to unscrew it, which takes both hands, and it ends up being even clunkier. Enter the Osmo 4 and its magnetic mounting system. It's pretty much worth buying the Osmo Action 4 over the GoPro just for this. The Osmo Action comes with these magnetic mounts that are compatible with the aforementioned finger mounts and the camera simply clicks into place. And then just squeeze the tabs to remove. It's that simple. So you can be recording an angle, let's say from the handlebars, and then just grab the camera and stick it on your helmet. Now 
Now this is a real game changer for me. You have no idea how much time and effort and money that I have spent trying to make this stuff easier. With this magnetic mount, I can easily switch between like 10 different camera angles without even stopping the bike. Two points to the Osmo action. And the final point that I'd like to address here is by far the most important. Reliability. GoPros crash, and they crash a lot. There's this thing that happens fairly often where the GoPro just refuses to switch on. And the only way to fix the issue is to take the battery out and then put it back in. And this has been an issue for as long as GoPro has existed. And they still haven't fixed it 11 generations in. This bug has cost me so many shots. When you make videos of your travels like I do, there are spontaneous moments happening all the time. And if you can't get that camera switched on and recording quickly, then that moment's gone, lost forever. And thanks to GoPro, that has happened to me many times. Now there's various other little bugs and glitches and quirks, but if you've used GoPro for a long time, then you will have encountered that one and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And this is where the DJI wins. It's reliable. It switches on when you ask it to, it records when you ask it to, you don't miss those candid moments, and you don't have to mess around pulling batteries out in the pouring rain. It just works. And it sounds so silly, but I can't even begin to tell you what a big deal that is. That it just works when you need it to. Three points to DJI and it's over. And that's why I've chosen the Osmo Action 4 as an upgrade instead of GoPro. So if anyone wants to buy a secondhand Hero 7, just let me know. Only one previous owner who used it very responsibly. All right, so let's just quickly talk about the bundle that I chose and what comes with that. So I picked up the Adventure Combo. This comes with a few extra bits and bobs, but the main things of note are the selfie stick and the battery charger, along with a couple of extra batteries. Now, if you do the maths on how much this stuff would cost to buy separately, it's definitely worth picking up this combo, which I think is the best one they do. The battery charger also functions as a case for your spare batteries and has these handy little indicator lights in green, orange or red, indicating fully charged, medium charge or completely flat respectively. It charges via USB-C, it's quick charge compatible and it's just a great little package. I think it's a must have if you're planning on filming for any more than a couple of hours. Now, the selfie stick. This unassuming little thing extends to a ridiculous 1.5 meters, which is pretty impressive for how compact it is when folded up. Now, it seems to be fairly sturdy, but it does have a bit of flex to it when you have it fully extended with the camera on it. I suppose this is to be expected because you'd probably need to make it a lot heavier if you wanted more rigidity. Now, as you've probably guessed, I'm not really a selfie stick kind of guy, but I've actually been having some fun with this. You can get some pretty fun angles with this thing, and especially if you use the Invisi Stick feature. That's right, DJI have added a function to remove the selfie stick from your video. And you can do this pretty simply with the DJI Mimo app. The app uploads the video to the cloud, where AI automatically removes the stick and then sends it back to your phone. Now you can get some really fun effects with this, like making it look like you're being followed by a drone and stuff like that. But that extra step of uploading it to the cloud is an extra step in your workflow. And I can't see myself really using it for that reason. I think if they could streamline that process a little bit, I could maybe see myself using it, but right now it's just way too convoluted for me. Okay guys, so that's it. I know this was a pretty basic review, but for me, what it comes down to is this. Why would I rather buy this than a GoPro? And hopefully I've been able to show you guys why I think it's the better choice. So let me know in the comments what you guys think, and if that was useful, maybe hit that sub button. All right, until next time guys, cheers.